Hey everybody, Mike Iaconelli back out here in the shop and I've got a good one for you today. So good, in fact, it pains me to give this one away, but it's too good. I'm burning it all down. I got to give you this one. And today I'm going to be talking about a top secret lure, top secret way to fish this lure that will catch you summertime bass. Um, you know, one of the big summertime patterns, no matter where you live, I don't care if you're in Florida, Texas, California, Canada, New York, wherever you're at, Ohio, bass in the summer like to get deep, deeper. And deep is a relative term, right? In some lakes, the deepest water is eight or 10 feet. In others, it's 40, 50 feet. So that's relative. But in the summer, a population of those bass will head deep. And those fish go deep for a lot of reasons. They go deep because that water's cooler out there. That water generally has a better oxygen content out there. But the number one reason bass go deep in the summer is because their food is out there. And you know, summertime deep fishing, there's a lot of good baits that have been really, really good over the last 5, 10, 15, 20 years. Let's talk about them real quick. You ready? A big jig, a big 10 inch worm, Carolina rig, a big swim bait, uh, a drop shot, a jig and spoon, a hair jig. We could keep going on and on with baits that fish see out deep every summer. Think about that, right? Every summer, those fish off the bank are seeing those same eight or 10 or 12 lures over and over and over again. And this one, out deep, they do not see a lot at all. And I'm here to expose it. And my secret summertime lure is a big, heavy, big, heavy, vibrating jig. Okay? Vibrating jig. And I don't, I'm talking about every type. We're not going to just say chatterbait. We're going to say vibrating jig. So no matter what brand you're fishing, uh, if you're fishing Strike King or Mullix or Z-Man, whatever brand you're fishing, a big, heavy, vibrating jig. When I say big and heavy, I'm talking about three-quarter ounce, one ounce, ounce and a quarter, or even ounce and a half. I'm talking about these big, heavy, vibrating jigs out deep to fish that don't see vibrating jigs out deep. You know, if you think about this lure category, right? Let's look at a vibrating jig. We've got a metal, or plastic blade attached to a lead head and a big single hook. Look at that big single hook. With a skirt and then whatever trailer we add. And a vibrating jig has the uncanny ability to vibrate and shake and swim as we retrieve it. And for the last five, eight years since a vibrating jig has hit the market. We primarily throw these things shallow, right? Isn't that true? We take a vibrating jig, zero to five foot, five to eight, eight to 10. We fish, we fish those vibrating jigs in shallower water. But what about fishing that vibrating jig deep? 10, 12. 15, 20, 30, 40 feet deep. 
same action, same reaction strike, same impulse bite, but to fish that don't see this bait all the time. So I'm here to talk to you and expose fishing big vibrating jigs, three quarter ounce, all the way up to ounce and a half for deep fish, especially in the summer. All right, let's start with the bait. Again, you know, two common types right here. We've got the traditional metal build uh, jig head version, and we've got the plastic build Mullix version. On trailers, because it's summer, I like to add to these baits a trailer that has some action to it, right? So when it's cold, trailer that has minimal action. But in the summer, I want to add a trailer to these baits that has a lot of action. My two favorite kind of trailers are a big crawl. And this is one of my favorites right here. We've got a four inch, a Berkeley Chigger Crawl. This is an awesome trailer. Um, I'm going to rig it on this Mullix Lover, uh, ounce and a half vibrating jig. Generally, when I put them on these big ones, I don't bite it down at all. It's not a small vibrating jig. It's a big vibrating jig. So I, I don't trim it down. And I like to thread these crawls on these vibrating jigs sideways. So here's this four inch chigger crawl. By the way, this is an Ike's custom color from Tackle Warehouse called Grunge. Great perch or bluegill imitation. And I like to put that bait on sideways. I'll break those arms off. And that gives it a more of a big bait fish profile and gives it a ton of action. So I love crawls. And the other trailer I like a lot on these vibrating jigs is boot tail style swim baits. A swim bait that has a nice little kick in the back. Um, love this one. This is a Berkeley Power Swimmer. I like the 3.8, the 4.3, and even the 4.8 if I want a big profile. And also, there's another one. This is a Berkeley Power Bait Grass Pig. Both of these swim bait trailers make a great trailer for these big vibrating jigs out deep. Okay? Let's talk about rod reel line, and then we're gonna get to the two techniques that we're gonna use for these fish out deep, okay? All right, rod reel line, because these vibrating jigs now are big, right? These aren't our standard quarter, three eighths and half ounce vibrating jigs. These are big ones, three quarter, one ounce, ounce and quarter, even ounce and a half. Because of that, I'm going to upsize my rod a little bit. And I want to use a 7.2 to 7.6 medium heavy rod. But my favorite is right here. It's a 7.4 medium heavy Abu Garcia Ike power rod. Here's the main thing though. When you're fishing that vibrating jig out deep, pick a medium heavy. But look, it's not a straight heavy, right? It's a medium heavy. So it's got tip. You want this rod with these, even though these, these vibrating jigs are big and heavy, you want a little tip. It's going to let you cast it a long way. When that fish hits it, it's going to give it a little delay when you set the hook. And that little bit of delay, that little bit of sponge is going to help that fish get that entire bait in his mouth before you jack it, okay? So 7.2 to 7.6 medium heavy. I love the 7.4. On your reel, and you're gonna see why in a second when I talk about technique, for big vibrating jigs out deep in the summer, you want a faster gear ratio, low profile casting reel. Seven to one or greater, this right here is a Revo Ike. Uh, it's eight, zero to one. You need a fast retrieve, not because you're going to retrieve the bait fast, but a lot of the bites on this bait out deep hit it and push straight at you. They hit it and, and, and head toward you. So you need it for line recovery. Last but not least, out deep, 80% of the time when I'm fishing 
a big, heavy, vibrating jig out deep for these summertime bass. 80% of the time, I want fluorocarbon. 15 to 25 pound fluorocarbon. I love 17 pound, it's perfect, it's right in the middle. And the reason I want fluoro, two reasons. The one, fluorocarbon's dense and it's gonna help get this bait deep and help give it the most action because it's a dense line, right? I don't want a line that floats, I want a line that sinks. So fluorocarbon for its dense sinking capability and I actually want a little bit of stretch. I don't want a lot, right? This is 17 pound fluorocarbon, Berkeley Trilane 100%, look. Look at that, a little bit of stretch, just a little, right? Mono's got a lot, Braid has none, but a little bit of stretch, again, think about it. That bass is gonna touch it, you feel it, you start setting the hook. I want that fish to entirely get into his mouth and between that medium, ac medium heavy action tip and that fluorocarbon, it's going to sort of delay or soften up your hook set. Very, very key with a vibrating jig. 20% of the time, if I'm in extremely heavy cover, the thickest standing timber you've ever seen in your life, uh, the thickest gnarly, thick hydrilla, 20% of the time, I'll use braid, but I'll use a fluorocarbon leader. I'll use about a foot to a two foot fluorocarbon leader. 50 pound braid is great. Same uh, pound on the fluorocarbon, 15 to 25, that 17 is great. All right, you've heard about the baits, three quarter ounce to ounce and a half, everything in between. You've heard about the trailers, pick a trailer with a lot of action. You know about the rod and the reel. Now let's tell you about my two main techniques on how I fish it. I'll sprinkle in a third for you. This is a killer out deep. But let's start with my favorite way to fish a vibrating jig deep, and it's called feathering. Feathering the bait. And what feathering means is, look how heavy that bait is, right? It's three quarter ounce, it's ounce and a quarter, it's one ounce. And I make a long cast to where the fish are living, right? Out deep, end of a log point, a channel swing, uh, a high spot, a hump. I cast it past where they're living and I let it sink to the bottom. Once I feel that bait hit the bottom, I feel the line bellow out, right? It sinks, it sinks, it sinks, boom. The line bellows out, it's hit the bottom. 10 feet, 15 feet, 20, 30, whatever it is, boom. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my rod and reel to feather up and let it fall back down. Now if you can imagine out deep, these fish that have never seen this action of a bait. The bait's But slow, right? You're just using your reel and your rod to feather it up and let it fall back down. To feather it up and let it fall back down. It's called the feathering technique. Um, long cast, past the target, hit the bottom, and just rod from about three o'clock up to about one, and reel. And then bow to it. Lean forward, let it fall back down. Bow to it, lean forward, and let it fall down. I have had bites when that bait is falling, you'll see your line poop, pop. Remember what I said about that fast ratio? They'll hit it and come at you, I've seen the line pop. I've had bites when, boom, it hits the bottom and I reel and pull back up, feather. Rrr, they see that bait slowly start vibrating, crawl off the bottom, boom, they eat it. So I've seen them bite on the fall and the lift but for deep water, that heavy vibrating jig, feathered, is phenomenal. The next retrieve, and you're gonna know this one, it's gonna sound familiar, and it's snatching or popping it off the bottom. It's a lot like stroking a big jig. And if you've ever fished a giant jig out deep, a football jig, a three quarter, or one ounce, or an ounce and a quarter ounce football jig, 
You know that technique where you let it fall to the bottom, it's super heavy, falls a million miles an hour, boom, hits the bottom. When it hits, you snatch it up, pop it up, and it violently lifts off the bottom and jumps and falls back down. So unlike feathering, in the popping or snatching technique, exactly the same as, as ripping a jig, right? Exactly the same as, as ripping that football jig out deep. This bait's gonna quickly rise and quickly fall, right? So it's, it's a faster version of feathering. Same thing, I cast past my target, and I wanna show you what I'm doing. I cast past my target, I let it sink to the bottom, boom. When it hits the bottom, my rod's down here at about three, and instead of gently lifting and reeling, I'm gonna violently, violently take my rod, I actually take my hand off the reel, and as I lift my rod from three to 12, I smack the bottom of my rod. So it's a violent whew, lift of that bait. And after I lift, just like on the feather, right? Just like on the feather, after it hits 12, I wanna to bow to it, throw slack into the line, so that it and immediately falls back down. This is the popping snatching method with this big vibrating jig for summer bass is a lot better when the fish are lethargic. When they're not actively eating, that rapid motion's better than the feathering, okay? They're the two main methods I'm gonna fish this really big vibrating jig. Let me sprinkle a third you know this one already too, and it does work a lot with this bait, especially when the water's dirtier or the light's more low. And the last one I'm gonna to give to you is slow rolling a vibrating jig. Slow rolling the vibrating jig. And all that one is, is casting past your target, letting it sink to the bottom. But instead of feathering or snatching and popping, all we're gonna do is a slow, steady retrieve. The neat thing about this for darker water, more stained water, or low light conditions is it keeps the bait in the strike zone a lot longer. It has that steady vibration the whole way back to the boat, and it gives the fish the ability to track it a lot easier. Remember, dirtier water, low light, the slow roll can be real good. And on that one, literally, after I cast to that target, let it sink to the bottom, I'm just reeling real slow. And every 10, 12 winds, I throw a pause into it, boom, and let it get back on the bottom, and I just pick up that slow wind again, right? Just a typical slow rolling retrieve. After about 10 or 12 winds, it starts to want to lift, pause, falls back down, 10 or 12 winds, throw pauses in there. A lot of bites will come on that pause. A lot of bites will come when you're steady winding it, right? Man, this one seems so simple, but it is so underfished for deep summertime fish. I'm not telling you to stop those other eight or 10 things. Big worm, big jig, spoon, hair jig, Carolina rig. I'm not telling you deep diving crankbait. I'm not telling you to stop those things. I'm telling you, add a big vibrating jig three quarter, one ounce, ounce and a quarter, ounce and a half. Add a big vibrating jig to your arsenal for deeper summertime fish. Try one of those three retrieve techniques, especially feathering and popping or snapping. I promise you, you're gonna get bites you couldn't get with any other method in the summertime. Big vibrating jig, fish deep in the summer equals big bass. Hope you enjoyed this let out of the bag in the shop of that big vibrating jig. If you like what you're hearing, hit that subscribe button right there, mash it, subscribe to my channel. We have secrets, new techniques, tips every single week coming straight to you. If you're already subscribed, tell your fishing friends about Mike Iaconelli fishing on YouTube. We're going to teach you some great new techniques and how to catch fish. Good luck. Good fishing. Try that big vibrating jig in the summer. You're going to catch some big bass. Bye.